Uh, hello everyone, this is Noura Abu Diab. Inshallah, today we're going to be explaining the uh, fractures of the, oh, the common fractures of the upper limb. So, to begin, we're going to start with the clavicular fractures. So, before we talk about classifications, let's learn a little bit about the description of the clavicle. So, first, the clavicle is divided into three main segments. And then, first, the lateral side, the medial, or lateral segment, the medial segment, and the middle segment. و according to this uh, تقسيمة or according to this classification حنقسم أنواع ال fractures so عندي mid shaft fracture in the middle portion عندي an outer end fracture ففي the lateral portion and medial portion عندي acromioclavicular separation أو مثلا dislocation في the acromioclavicular joint between the acromion of the scapula with the clavicle bone طيب and then I have the sternoclavicular dislocation so a dislocation between the clavicle with the sternum so, the most common type of uh, clavicular fracture is a mid-shaft fracture. Why is that? There is a certain concept that's very important. Uh, let's put the clavicle aside. Let's put it on a table. Now, we're talking about all the long bones of the body. Okay? So, our long bones have a kind of shock-absorbing property. How do you الحين if I have any kind of long bone, let's take the humerus for example. طيب. وصار في a certain force generated on this humerus. This bone will try as much as it can to avoid being fractured. فإيش حتسوي العظمة؟ الحين أنا الحين صار في a force عليها. It will try to slightly move. So the articular cartilage with subchondral bone will help this bone or this long bone or this humerus. To move a bit to the right, a bit to the left, shrink it down, shrink it wider. Slight movement, so I'm more dislocation, just in order to help the humerus absorb this shock. For this, I mean, shock or or this amount of force in the jet of the humerus, it tries to absorb it instead of being fractured. But so, if this amount of force was overwhelming, what will happen? It's going to eventually fracture. But how the mechanism is different in the beginning. Okay. Um. Let's talk a little bit about the clavicle. So, in the slides, there are many sources. They mention that the ligaments that support the clavicle medially and laterally, okay, oh, sorry, laterally and medially, okay, these ligaments are stronger than the bone itself. So, the clavicle is The clavicle is so stable in its place. Had to try to put your hand on your clavicle and try to move it a bit upward, downwards, whatever it is. It's so stable. So, you can't apply the same theory حق موضوع long bones على clavicle because long bones they shift free from their position to absorb a shock. The clavicle doesn't have that. You know, it's so stable from the sides. ما في مجال انها تتحرك. But any kind of direct force on the clavicle will directly snap it. حيصير في fracture. طيب الحين نقول ليش في النص. بهذا فهمنا الحين ليش fractures are common. زي ما احنا زي ما قلنا مشوية إنه ligaments that support the clavicle medially and laterally are so strong. فيعني that's why the medial and lateral fractures are so rare or not common at all. فحتى we can apply this um to an analogy. طيب تخيل إنه أنت ماسكين عصاية or a certain stick. Okay. So your hands are on the right and left side of the stick. صح. ف your hands هما كأنهم هذه ligaments. So the lateral and medial ligaments. So how do they represent your hand? The muscle stick. So if the anti generate a force on the stick, so you bend it, okay? No one is going to snap. It's going to snap from the center, صح? So that's why the most common fracture is the midclavicular fracture. Ah, so when we finish with things, we talk about the mechanism of injury. The mechanism of injury is any force applied to the shoulder region. How will there be force in the shoulder region? إما I fall with arms out on my hand. So if I fall this way, there will be a huge amount of force on my shoulder region. But this will radiate to the clavicle. It's going to break the clavicle. But that's one way. Another way is falling directly onto your shoulder. So my shoulder will be thrown on the earth, and there will be a force on the clavicle, and it will be broken. And the last one, the most logical one, direct blow to the shoulder. So something will hit my shoulder or my clavicular region, and it will break the clavicle. أو تكلمنا عن هذه. Okay, حين نتكلم عن complications. So we have a couple of kinds of complications. بس دقيقة. Okay, so we have one malunion, two damage to the vessels, three nonunion, four deformity. نتكلم عن كل واحدة رح أشوف نفهمها. أول شيء المالunion. 
ايش معنى كلمه مال يونين ات مينز ذا بون هيلز بس ان امبروبر واي فالبون ما يرجع النورمال لايمنت حقها لاتس اوف هايست ذا كلافيكل زي ما نرجع ورا لهذه الصوره نعرف انه الكلافيكل ما هي ستريت بون اتس ا كيرفد بون عندها كونكيف بارت كونفكس بارت فات هاز سم هاف ان اس شيب صح ف يو كان ايماجين اف يو تراي تو بوت ذا كلافيكل باك ان بليس يو كانت ريلي يعني مره صعب انه يو الاين ذا كلافيكل بيرفكتلي يعني حيكون في مثلا شويه متقدم شويه راجع على ورا ف that's why في the healing process if it's not perfectly aligned حيكون في mal union ف the bone will heal بس in improper way ما حيكون properly aligned ف this is why mal union happens هاي رقم واحد رقم اثنين متعلقين ببعض ال damage to vessels and non union ليش حيكون في damage to vessels وهذه أهم complication damage to vessels لأنه if you go to this picture زي ما انتم شايفين تحت ال clavicle تعدي very important structures يعني نتكلم عن أول شيء subclavian وال axillary so above the clavicle عندي subclavian below the clavicle عندي ال axillary فال subclavian تتحول ل axillary right so imagine صار في fracture هنا على clavicle the spikes حقت ال bones اللي طلعوا will directly damage the um, the axillary artery أو إذا على فوق شوية ال subclavian artery وحتى إيش في عندنا structures معدية من هنا أكيد حيكون في ال axillary أو ال subclavian vein ماشية معاها غيرها حيكون في إيش هنا عندي ال brachial plexus فحتى احتمال يكون في neurological damage ف damage to the brachial plexus itself ف فهذه damage to vessels ثالث شيء non union what does non union mean non union means lack of healing or no healing due to lack of blood supply فإذا أنا صار في عندي مثلا blockage to a certain أو أو a rupture of a certain artery أو a certain vein أو مو vein artery بشكل عام uh this person didn't get any kind of medical attention فحيكون في lack of blood supply لل uh للكلافيكل صح ف this will cause mal union اكيد هذا ما حيكون له علاقه بالسبكليفن او الاكسيلري انه هذا حي... the person is going to bleed to death if ما اخذوا um, any kind of medical attention بس generally عندنا many kinds of branches that supply the clavicle ف اذا كان if any of them got damaged by the injury or the person did not seek medical attention او if the medical uh personnel responsible for for this person يعني ما انتبه للموضوع بكل سهولة ممكن يصير في non union طبعا deformities بشكل عام طيب so الحين نتكلم عن treatment so this تقريبا applies to all kinds of fractures generally طبعا في some kinds of exceptions from we have either a conservative approach أو a, sur- uh, a surgical approach meta conservative و meta surgical The conservative approach, لما يكون عندي minimal or no displacement, فالعظمة تكون okay, it's fractured, بس مو مرة تحركت من مكانها. طيب, يعني it's either بنفس مكانها أو تحركت مرة نقطة. So minimal or no displacement. ثاني شيء لازم تكون non-articular, but it has to be outside the joint. So if these two things apply, then we can go ahead with a conservative treatment. ثاني شيء اللي هو surgical approach. So we go in for surgery, اللي هي open reduction internal fixation, or if. ميتا نسوي surgical approach اللي هي عكس ال conservative if it's extremely displaced or if it's a displaced fracture وثاني شيء if it's an intra-articular fracture فهذي حطوها ببالكم ومرة مهمة وحينطبق على كل شيء whether lower limbs, upper limbs, كل شيء any kind of intra-articular fracture so any kind of fracture inside a joint دائما it's a surgical approach مستحيل يكون conservative approach فهذي الرول حطوها ببالكم any kind of intra-articular fracture would be a surgical approach. ممكن ما يكون specifically ORF بس دائما حيكون surgical approach. So I think I covered everything. Oh, one more thing. Uh, early mobilization. فمرة مهم in fractures بشكل عام إنه ال patient ما يكون immobilized for, for a long period of time. ليه? Because if you mobilize the patient, if you immobilize the patient for a long period of time, حيصير في joint stiffness, حيكون في chance of osteoarthritis. طبعا مو بس في الكلافيكل. كل مكان. But that's why early mobilization is essential. فخلصنا من الكلافيكل وي موف اون تو ذا شولدر ريجن في الشولدر ريجن اول شيء حنتكلم عن ديسلوكيشنز سو وي هاف ديفرنت كايندز اوف ديسلوكيشنز عندي انتيريور ديسلوكيشن بوستيريور ديسلوكيشن في عندي كايند اوف ديسلوكيشن كولد لوكزاتيو اريكتا اوكي سو ويتش بيسكلي مينز انفيريور ديسلوكيشن بس مو بنعرف التو نيمز ايذر لوكزاتيو اريكتا او انفيريور ديسلوكيشن وعندي فراكتور ديسلوكيشن واللي هي بيسكلي ا ديسلوكيشن اند ا فراكتور ات ذا سيم تايم وعندي مالتي دايركشنال ديسلوكيشن حنتكلم عن كل وحده رحال الانتيير ديسلوكيشن من اسمهم الهيومرس جوز انتيير تو ذا جلانو هيومرال جوينت سو يروح لقدام يروح ات موفز انتيريورلي 
طيب نتكلم عن كل وحده الحين عشان ما نلخبط شويه طيب قلنا عن الانتيرير سو ون اوف ذا كومن كومبليكيشنز اوف انتيرير لوكيشن ما هي مكتوبه في السلايدز بس توز منشن في ون اوف ذا اكتورز حقت كويز 2 So a common complication is hill socks deformity. And it's the most common complication of anterior dislocation. Is she hill socks deformity? If we go to this picture. Oh, no, let focus a little So this is the humerus, right? So imagine if the humeral head comes anteriorly. طيب. It can't really move anteriorly. Why? Because here we have the coracoid process. You see this outline of the head? We have the coracoid process, right? So... الهيومرال هيد هاز تو جو بيت داونوردز فلما لما تروح على قدام الهيومرال هيد ويل هيت ذا كوركويد بروسس ف ذس ويل كوز ان اندنتيشن في الهيومرال هيد حيكسر بارت اوف ذا هيومرال هيد فهذه الاندنتيشن او او الحفره اللي صارت في الهيد اوف ذا هيومرز نسميها الهيل ساكس ديفورميتي تصير مع مين؟ مع الانتيري ديسلوكيشن ليش مع الانتيري؟ لانه ات جوز ان هيت ذا كوركويد بروسس سو ذاتس اول وي هاف فور ذا انتيري ديسلوكيشن Now moving on to posterior dislocation. Basically, the humeral head uh, dislocates posteriorly. طيب. That's all we have to know. It's hard to diagnose from a normal X-ray. Oh, it's much less common than anterior dislocation. Le, to give an ninety-five um, percent of shoulder dislocations are anterior. To give even four point five percent are posterior, and around point five percent are luxatio erecta or inferior dislocation. So, تكلمنا عن anterior, تكلمنا عن posterior. الحين نروح ل luxatio erecta أو نتكلم عن inferior dislocation. So, inferior dislocation من اسمه the humeral head dislocates inferiorly. So, the head goes downwards. Okay. This is very serious. مرة مهم نت يعني صح تصير بس مرة مهم نتعلم عنها ونفهم هي كيف تصير لأن complications حقتها مرة severe. Why is that? خلينا نتذكر شوية anatomy. طيب. What runs below the humeral head? من هنا. هذا the humeral head. إيش structures تعدي من هنا? Let's go back to the picture اللي وراه. شوفوا هنا. هذا the humeral head. تحت إيش عندي؟ عندي the axillary artery. شوفوا هذا دي. هذا axillary artery. So it's here the humeral head turns على تحت. It's gonna compress this artery. إيش كمان جنب the axillary artery? عندي parts of the brachial plexus. عندي طبعاً the axillary vein ماشي معها. فعندك axillary artery, axillary vein, and brachial plexus. For inferior humeral dislocation, will compress those structures. I see damage fiha. For that's why it's very serious. We need immediate medical attention to relocate the humerus back in place. Um, طيب. وباقي fracture dislocation. All we have to know is that it's a dislocation and a fracture at the same time. We did not talk about the multidirectional. And here we talk about treatment. So, specifically, الحين حنتكلم بس عن anterior dislocation treatment أو reduction used for anterior dislocation. عندي four kinds. عندي the hanging arm technique. That's number one. Number two is Hippocratic method. Number three is Kosher's method. And number four, MUA. هي manipulation under anesthesia. Basically, all it means is that you put anesthesia on the patient and you move his head until the humerus pops back into place. Um, we are not trained to know every one of them. What is the specific technique? But I know myself when I found it, I felt that it was easy to remove the information a little bit and remove the information. So I'm just going to go ahead and explain them. But we don't have to know them for the exam. But the first one is now. We're talking about the hanging arm technique. From the name, it's very obvious. So first of all, the patient is going to hang their arm. على جنب السرير أو from the side وحنحط weights on their hand من هنا زي ما انتم شايفين وبس يقعد زي كذا in around 5 minutes the shoulder will relocate من نفسه وعادي it's gonna pop back into the glenohumeral يعني حصير the glenohumeral joint حيرجع عادي very easy next one is the Hippocratic method هنا مفروض يكون double P بس بالغلط spelling mistake um, Hippocratic method إيش هو برضو كتبت هنا brief explanation Uh, a physician will put their foot, specifically the heel of their foot, to the armpit of the patient, حقي طبعا ال affected side, and then they will pull their hand. But this kind of traction or this kind of uh, movement will pop the humeral head back into the socket or higher jadi has to be relocation. Next method is the kosher method. So هذه الصورة حق السلايد حسيتها مو واضحة مرة. So I used this picture instead. So what do we do? أول شيء we move the affected arm طيب uh, we pull it down in the in the direction of the arm's longitudinal axis فهذا the longitudinal or the vertical axis of the arm صح فنسحبها على تحت so that's the first kind of movement second kind of movement is externally rotating the arm 
فعشان زد بالكلام so you're gonna pull the arm downwards and externally rotate at the same time for this kind of movement will pop the humerus back in place بس that's it so now we'll talk about uh, shoulder dislocation treatment oh I already mentioned those so عندي posterior dislocation بس ما قلتها اللي هي إيش if the humeral joint dislocates posteriorly رجعت على وراء مرة سهل الموضوع you're just gonna pull the arm و if uh, anteriorly we're gonna relocate it the inferior dislocation تكلمنا عنها we mentioned اللي هي luxatio recta قلنا the vessel injury which can cause ischemia اللي تكلمنا عنها uh, هنا فوق we related it to the structures اللي beneath it but we already covered that um, okay so خلصنا من the dislocations الحين we're gonna move on to fractures so fractures حنتكلم أول شيء عن the proximal part of the humerus so the proximal humeral fractures عندي three kinds and the avulsion of the greater tuberosity, and the surgical neck, uh, surgical neck of the humor of the humerus fracture, and the fracture dislocation of the shoulder. Okay, so we'll talk about each one individually. I'll have to make details. Kithira, avulsion of the greater tuberosity basically means in the greater tuberosity fractures, it moves a bit out of its place. So this is a picture for class for clarification. So this is the lesser tuberosity. This is the greater tuberosity. شوفوا كيف طالعة مكانها so this is avulsion أو a fracture يعني with partial dislocation next is surgical neck of the humerus fracture a fracture of the surgical neck of the humerus uh, خلنا نوريكم صورة مهمة oh wait let's talk a bit عنها شوية uh, a surgical neck when هذا surgical neck right so in humerus you have the head بشكل عام في عندك هنا anatomical neck and we have here the surgical neck so surgical neck of the humerus is associated with a very important kind of injury. So it's associated with auxiliary nerve injury. Most auxiliary nerve, auxiliary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral artery. So we'll go back a bit to anatomy. So this is the posterior view of the shoulder region. So this is the surgical neck of the humerus. So in the head, here is the glenohumeral joint. This is the area of the surgical neck. So you can imagine if there's a fracture in this area, the the fracture fragments I will I will um, even fracture fragments they will hit this area or they're gonna damage the auxiliary nerve. Or command them the auxiliary nerve. What's going on with it? It's going on the posterior circumflex humeral artery. You know how the posterior surface, how the posterior surface of the of the shoulder region. Of course, I'm not going to the details, but command they pass through what revision anatomy show you. They pass through the quadrangular space. To go posteriorly and support and supply this area, but that's why auxiliary uh, auxiliary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral artery. Are the common complications of fractures of the surgical neck of the humerus. Um, طيب but then عندي fracture dislocation of the shoulder. It's just a fracture and dislocation at the same time. فالحين تكلمنا عنهم بشكل عام. Now we'll talk about the classifications. So classification of the proximal humerus. Uh, نسميها near classification. طيب. Uh, وفي تقريبا عندنا 6 one بالعادة they don't use it because it's مرة minimally displaced وما فيها شيء مرة ف they usually just ignore it we start from 2 okay so 2 is anatomical neck fracture 3 is surgical neck fracture 4 is greater tuberosity fracture أو A vulgar تكلمنا عنها 5 is lesser tuberosity fracture و 6 is fracture dislocation فما شاء الله they're a lot فكيف نتذكرهم أنا عن نفسي I go back to this picture. طيب. We go from up to down. أو نمسك يعني حبة حبة. نبدأ من البداية. So عندي أول شيء anatomical neck. فاحنا قلنا نبدأ from number two, right? So anatomical neck is number two. بعد إيش يجي? Surgical neck. So neck, neck. Two, three. So number two is anatomical neck. Number three is surgical neck. خلصنا من neck. إيش إيش يجي بعدها? The tuberosities. So أبدأ في the greater tuberosity and then I go to the lesser tuberosity. So here we have two. Here we have three. Greater tuberosity is four. Lesser tuberosity is five. So خلصنا two necks, two tuberosities. So three. I mean two, three, four, five. آخر واحدة إيش؟ اللي هي ما بقيت fracture dislocation. So they كلهم fractures, right? آخر واحدة كده حتكون the worst one. So حتكون a fracture and a dislocation at the same time. I think we covered everything here. آه طيب أمم. هذه هي just mentioned it briefly ما هي مرة معانا بس بيتكلم عن different kinds of approaches of uh, يعني ورانا كيف ال kind of fracture وإيش الapproach حقهم فيعني زي ما أنتم شايفين it's minimally displaced وتقريبا ال fracture مكان يعني 
الفراكتشر لاين خفيف والفراكتشر سيجمنت او ذس بارت اوف ذا فراكتشر يعني ما تحركت مكانها سو اتس مينيمال ديسبليسد فور ذس وي وود جو فور ا كونزرفتيف ابروتش هنا زي ما انتم شايفين اتس ا بيت مور ديسبليسد نشوف كومبير ذا تو بيكتشرز شوفوا هنا كيف شوفوا هنا كيف هاي طلعت من مكانها اكثر هاي تقريبا بنفس مكانها ذير از ا فراكتشر لاين بس ريميند ان اتس بليس So for this kind of fracture, we we'll usually take surgery. Le, because it's displaced, it's a bit more displaced. So a surgical approach would be a more appropriate approach. But the one of the patient, but um, after surgery. Next, this. So you see, there's a fracture line, but it's very, kida, it's very vague. Where you can't really see the fracture line. Umar khafif, and it doesn't go through the entire humerus. So it's a simple fracture, and of course, a conservative approach. We just put uh, something to fixate the arm, or just a cast, and that's it. Now this one, as you can see, it's a picture that doesn't show anything, and you can't really differentiate the structures from each other. Why? Because this is a severely comminuted fracture. In the case of many segments, and I mean, everything is wrong, but it's impossible. A conservative approach would be suitable. Here, of course, it's a surgical approach because it's severely comminuted, many fracture segments. فوق انه it's a surgical approach مو بس ححط مثلا pins and needles وخلاص لا هنا لازم يكون في joint replacement either partial or complete joint replacement you know the joint is completely damaged شايفين انه ما في humeral head اصلا يعني يعني هنا it's completely diminished يعني من كثر ما هو تكسر فلازم يكون joint replacement either hemi arthroplasty meaning uh, partial او او partial, yeah, partial replacement او total arthroplasty meaning total replacement فان this case هو نفس البيشنت So we're now total replacement or total joint replacement. So we finished from the proximal humerus. We move on from proximal to distal. What is after? The humeral shaft. So for the humeral shaft, it can be edge, it can be spiral, it can be transverse, it can be segmental, and it can be pathological. So spiral means like that. It can be like a leaf or a stem. It's spiral. The name. Transverse is just horizontal. Segmental is a kind of comminuted fracture. What is it? يعني يكون عندي مثلا fracture هنا و fracture هنا كذا in two places for like you have two segments طبعا ممكن يكون ثلاثة ممكن يكون أربعة بس I have many segments so it's a type of comminuted fracture أو pathological pathological إيش هو؟ any kind of fracture that results um, because of a certain disease okay so the best example أكثر شيء درسنا عنه هو ال um, osteoporosis so if um, إيش كان اسمه؟ if a fragility fracture that resulted from osteoporosis happens هذا إيش نسميها؟ Pathological fracture. So that's one kind of humeral shaft fracture. So a ham complication. Who are the different complications? Female union, non-union. But a ham one that focuses on it is neurovascular damage. Let's let's go back to another one. Another one. This picture. So we have this is the posterior aspect of the uh, of the arm, al arm and forearm. Okay. So as you can see here, the radial groove on the posterior aspect of the humerus, what is it? The radial nerve, right? The radial groove. And we always take it as a rule. Okay, and this is applicable to everything. Even in the anatomy lab, if you go and check it out, you will see it with the radial nerve. Always on the an important artery to get it. Every place you go to the radial nerve, you have to get this artery. Who? Which is the deep brachial artery or the profound brachial artery. Which is the deep brachial artery. So this artery then runs next to the radial nerve. Okay. So I want the humeral shaft. That's the humeral shaft, right? So any kind of fracture in this area, if the fracture fragments can directly hit this, and it causes damage, whether the radial nerve or the deep brachial artery. So it's very common to have injury to those structures. فمتى ما نشوف a humeral shaft fracture دائما لازم نسوي neurovascular assessment and we specifically check for the radial nerve and the deep brachial artery. What's next? Um, okay. So تكلمنا عن neurovascular damage, malunion, nonunion. We usually conservative approach is suitable. خاص you can just um, manually align the bone back in place and then hot cast or we just fixate it or for a certain period of time. Well, that's it. Unless Surgery is indicated. Or uh, open uh, reduction internal fixation. For mitel cases, اللي يكون فيها surgery is indicated. هذا اللي مكتوبين هنا. So لما يكون عندي open fracture, لما يكون the bone fragment طلعت برا skin, so it protrudes through the skin and طلعت على برا. For أكيد حيكون surgery indicated, right? If I have bilateral fracture, for fracture on both sides, in right and left hand, we have I have to do surgery. Um, another indication is polytrauma, so multiple trauma, lots of trauma. Uh, 
فهنا ما اعرف واتس جونا هابن ممكن في شيء ما تبان في الاكس راي ف سيرجيكال ابروتش از ذا بيست ابروتش او باثولوجيكال فراكتشر زي ما قلنا اكزامبل الناس اللي عندهم اوستيوبوروسيس اي كانت جست بوت ا كاست اون بيكوز ذي اوريدي هاف ا بروبلم ان ذير بون عندهم باثولوجي في البونز ف اي هاف تو ميك شور ان ذا بونز جونا هيل بروبرلي فعشان كذا لازم تسوي لهم ايش السيرجيكال ابروتش أو نيرف إنجري أو فاسكولار إنجري ليه؟ لأنه إذا عندي مثلا زي ما قلنا الراديال نيرف أو الديب بريكال أرتري صار فيها إنجري ذا فاسل أو النيرف وونت هيل إتسلف إتس نوت غونا بوت إتسلف باك إنتو بليس لازم أي سيرجيكلي ريبير ذس فاسل أو ذس نيرف فلما يكون في فاسكولار أو نيرف إنجري لازم يكون سيرجيكال أبروتش سو هنا بس بيقول لك إنه متى ما يكون سيرجري إز إنديكيتد فا أوبن ريدكشن إنترنال فيكسيشن لازم يكون في جود بلانينج ليه؟ كاز وين ذير إز جود بلانينج حيكون الأوتكم كويس ذاتس إت سو خلصنا من الـ humors وتكلمنا proximal humors uh, humoral shaft الحين نتكلم الـ fracture at the elbow أو الـ distal humors specifically where الـ supracondylar fracture سو so fracture above the epicondyles أو condyles of the humors أوكي؟ okay? So I'll talk about it because in this lecture, this is the most common fracture in slide. Why is this most slide? Because it's the most common fracture you see every day in the emergency department. It's the most common type of fracture in children. Every day, every day, the doctors in the ER see this kind of fracture in children. Every day, the child has a supracondylar fracture. So, and sometimes, in the case, even if you do test banks like SMLE or USMLE, it's a very common question. So, sometimes, it's important to understand it well. فأول شيء قلنا it's a very common fracture in children uh, ثاني شيء إيش الكم إيش الكمplications حقتها يكون في عندي vascular injury compartment syndrome Volksmann contracture nerve injury malunion و my uh, myositis ossificans okay طبعا إحنا ما تجنا في تفاصيل إيش هو Volksmann contracture إيش هو myositis ossificans بس أنا حطيته هنا عشان ساعدتني أسوي بالموضوع زيادة so أول شيء الأسهل myositis ossificans من اسمها ossificans so في ossification في الموضوع So, لما يصير في bone healing, okay, part of this bone healing يطلع برا مكانه, so it goes outside its margins and it forms bone in the surrounding muscles. So you can see here there is like a bone mass inside the muscle. So this is called myositis ossificans, okay. Next kind of complication is Volksmann contracture. So ما حد خب تفاصيل بس يعني this is an example. All you have to know is a deformity in the hand, finger, wrist caused by injury of muscles of the forearm. بس تصير في contracture بالطريقة مش كده اسمها Volksman contracture فهنا شوفوا ال contracture كيف that's it um, one more thing we mentioned vascular injury فبرضه كل ما نفهم أكثر كل ما حنقدر نتذكر أكثر بوقت الاختبار so ليش vascular injury let's look at one of the x-rays okay wait I'll delete this so let's look at this so this is the condyle أو the epicondyle of the humerus هنا المفروض الشافت صح Presumably because of the fracture, كيف الشافت قدم على قدام, right? So it went from here, from being here, and it went down there. فا what's this area called? إيش هذه المنطقة اللي عندنا؟ هذه الكوبيتال فاصة, right? So هنا عند ال elbow region anteriorly, we have the cubital fossa. إيش the structures اللي تعدي جوا this cubital fossa? عندنا the radial nerve, عندنا the biceps tendon. We have the brachial artery and we have the median nerve as well. So we have two nerves and one artery. If you imagine this part of the bone to touch the cubital fossa, it can damage all these structures. It can damage the median nerve, the ulnar nerve, the brachial artery. But that's why we have a neurovascular damage. And that's why it's very important for us to understand this kind of injury, and it's very common. Um, طيب, since we talked about it, we understand them. Let's talk about the treatment options. Uh, the treatment can be conservative, okay? So, yeah, so it can be conservative or CRPP. It's a bit of a kind of conservative treatment, but technically not conservative, but it's a major surgery. It's called closed reduction and percutaneous pinning. The um, question is, if you have a lot of pain, why not surgery? It's a very severe kind of fracture. There uh, are many associated complications. Why don't I do surgery? And it's possible that it will be a good outcome instead of um then it's a conservative approach وما اعرف ايش ممكن الاوتكم يكون اول شيء حطوه ببالكم ريممبر انه ذس از وات كومن ان تشيلدرن مره نادر انك تشوفوا ادلت وذ سوبر كوندلر فراكتشر متى ما تشوفوا كلمه سوبر كوندلر فراكتشر فكروا بتشيلدرن اتس موست بروبلي ا تشايلد اوكي ثاني شيء تشيلدرن هيل ريلي فاست الاطفال مره الهيلينج بروسس عندهم سريع ومره كويس 
ف if I just align the bone وأحطه back in place يعني يعني عادي يعني close reduction من برا من غير ما أعمل surgery و I make sure إنه everything is put back into place whether applying a cast or if a cast is not enough أعمل pair cutane spinning اللي هو أحط pins من برا just to make sure إنه the bone doesn't move from its place and that's more than enough و the healing process حيكون مرة سريع و everything is gonna go back to normal ف that's everything regarding supercondylar fractures الحين نتكلم عن الألبو نفسها. So, so wait, a supercondylar is not intraarticular. ما هو جوا الجوينت نفسها. So أنا هنا عندي. Let's go back to this. الألبو ال 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 yeah, the elbow joint is around this area. And one side of fracture, the fracture is here almost. So it's not inside the, it's not inside the joint. It's a bit below. It's a bit above the joint. But it's not an intraarticular fracture. Okay. So الحين we'll move on to intraarticular fractures. So fractures at the elbow itself. When we can see the fracture. ممكن يكون في الميدل epicondyle ممكن يكون في اللاترال epicondyle ممكن يكون مثلا في الأولكرنال من ورا we have different kinds of fractures بس المهم uh, وبرضه this is very common in children أهم شيء لازم نعرفه إنه إيش التريتمنت حق ال uh, fractures at the elbow أو intraarticular fractures زي ما قلنا في البداية any kind of intraarticular fracture any kind of fracture inside a joint دائما يكون إيش دائما حيكون عندي surgical approach مستحيل it's conservative because a joint is very movable ف any kind of motion throughout healing will delay the healing process أو حتى stop the healing process فهذا الشيء ما ننسى أي شيء intraarticular automatically حنقول uh, surgical approach وهنا قلنا rigid fixation ليش كلمة rigid عندنا هنا؟ لأنه no gaps should remain in the joint to ensure minim- uh, maximal range of motion after recovery شايفين هذه هذه ال fractures اللي هنا؟ إذا كان في عندي spaces in between them يعني إذا كان في any kind of gap وقت الهيلينج وما صار الهيلينج كامل this will minimize the range of motion of this of this joint حيكون ال range of motion حيكون constricted ما ح ال patient ما حيكون عنده maximal range of motion but this will diminish the function of the joint وتخيل if it's a child حرام this is common in children فimagine مثلا a ten or or a nine year old child وخاص their joint is not as functional as it was before يعني That's why لازم إنه we make sure إنه يكون rigid fixation عشان the child can regain full range of motion after healing. So um, نفس الشيء هنا fracture at the elbow قلنا a distal humerus it's an intraarticular fracture زي any other intraarticular fracture قلنا إيش هيكون a surgical approach. Um, one more point I have to mention. مو صح قلنا any kind of intraarticular fracture هيكون الحقه uh, approach هيكون surgical approach. في another point دائما نحطها كذا مع surgical approach so لما نشوف كلمة intraarticular fracture حنقول surgical approach مع early mobilization so the patient cannot يعني stop using the joint for a long period of time this is very bad you know, if you stop using the joint for a long period of time this will cause stiffness in the joint this will significantly increase the chance of osteoarthritis or many more complications فدائما لازم يكون في early mobilization depending on the kind of fracture Mobilization should happen 15 to 25 days after the injury. And I'll try to go back to the body because I want this patient to regain full range of motion. So just remember, intraarticular fracture equals um, surgical approach. Come on, ish early mobilization. So we finished from here. We're talking about the dislocation. So if there's a dislocation at the elbow joint, first thing, how the mechanism is done. Outstretched arm. So if you fall on your arm, has there be severe uh, more trauma? Yeah, there will be a high amount of force generated on your elbow area. So it will be a dislocation. With a type of dislocation, one common complication is as joint stiffness because the joint joint is in a when you push it back, there will be a problem with articular cartilage. So this can lead to joint stiffness. Another thing is heterotropic ossification. Very from the ossification we talked about above, it is the same thing. So it's bone growth and soft tissue. Um, هذه أهم شيء وبرضو close reduction should be done ASAP اللي هو بس إيش يعني close reduction just put it back into place with a short period of immobilization فبرضو لازم ما يحرك الجوينت for a short period of time just to ensure إنه صار في full recovery وزي ما قلنا أول any kind of joint trauma أو كذا مفروض immobilization ما يكون فترة طويلة تكون مرة قصيرة وسنس هنا it's just a dislocation immobilization should not exceed 10 days max هذا الماكسيموم 10 days عشان إيش؟ عشان ما يصير في stiffness so they can regain full range of motion after healing. Oh, we're done with this. Next, the olecranon fracture. 
So the endocrine fracture um, كيف تصير? A direct fall on your endocrine لما تطيح on your elbow على طول فحصير فيها endocrine fracture direct falls or trauma زي ما قلنا uh, برضو زي ما قلنا endocrine is part of the uh, elbow joint right? So it's intraarticular قلنا أي شيء intraarticular حيكون إيش? Surgery so, or open reduction internal fixation و same thing لازم إيش ما يكون uh, um, uh, patient should regain mobilization أنا uh, يعني على طول ما ينفع إنه يطول immobilize جن they can regain function uh, خلصنا من الأذكرنان وخلصنا من humerus يعني الحين we move on to the forearm uh, أول شيء حنتكلم عنه ال classification of radio أو مو classification نتكلم أول شيء عن radial head fractures فكيف يصير إيش the mechanism of this injury if you fall on outstretched arms زي اللي قبلهم فا في different kinds of radial head injuries حنتكلم الحين عن classifications وشي مرة مهم الدكتور قال إنه ال classifications ممكن تجينا أسئلة في الاختبار فا it's important to know them فا زي اللي قبل we have type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4 دائما طبعا دائما اللي بعدها حتكون أسوأ منها فا 2 is worse than 1, 3 is worse than 2 and 4 is worse than 3 so نبدأ في البداية obviously they're all fractures اسمها أصلا radial head fracture فا type 1 حتكون أهون واحدة أو the least severe one فحتكون إيش؟ minimally displaced I think there is no mechanical blockage to rotation. What do I mean by no mechanical blockage to rotation? This means that no, صح ال ال proximal radial ulnar joint. So the joint between the radius and the ulna is a pivot joint. So the radial head is like a square in front. So it it twists, it moves, it rotates inside the and the and the radial notch of the ulna. So this is the rotation that occurs. For type one, it's minimally displaced. They want to show you here, so not be a huge displacement. Or, typically, the next shape of the radial head doesn't change shape. So, there there can still be rotation. So that's fine. So that's type one. Type two, so logically, if type one is minimally displaced or no mechanical blockage, two type two will come the lower one. So it will be displaced or or severely displaced. So here, minimally displaced, you know, severely displaced. حتكون عكس هذي هذي no mechanical blockage هذي إيش حتكون فيها mechanical blockage بس so if type if type one is minimally displaced or type two is displaced إيش حتكون type three يعني أكيد type three حتكون أسوأ من two but what's worse than displacement comminution so it's not just one fracture هنا شفنا minimal displacement هنا شفنا في displacement شوفوا كيف طلعت من مكانها هنا حيكون comminution so I have multiple fractures or multiple fracture lines many fra uh, fracture fragments فعشان كده type three حتكون worse than two وأكيد حيكون في كمان mechanical blockage the rotation آخر واحدة قلنا one minimal displacement two displacement three comminution what's worse than comminution يعني خاص ما في شيء بعدها فا type four is gonna be radial head fraction with elbow dislocation so it's not only a fracture it's a fracture with dislocation so خاص in order to remember it for the exam قلنا إيش One, two is worse than one. Three is worse than two, and four is worse than three. For كل واحدة حتكون أسوأ من الثانية. فأنا مش كده بالترتيب. وإن شاء الله it's gonna be easy. Um, the treatment is variable حسب ال severity of the of the fracture. طيب خلصنا من the proximal part. الحين نروح للshafts. So if I have a fracture in the shaft of the ulna of the radi or of the radius. For government claim and classifications, of course, there is an important concept that we have to keep in mind. For the ulna or radius, صح, they are long bones, but whenever we're talking about fractures, we classify the ulna or radius as joints. For any kind of fracture in the ulnar shaft or the radial shaft, we consider it as an intraarticular fracture. Why is this claim? Because the radial and the ulna are responsible for an important kind of movement, which is Is supination and pronation. So when your hand is supinated, okay, the radius and the ulna are parallel to each other. But when you, uh, so when you turn your hand and you put it in the pronated position, the radius and the ulna cross each other. For they make this X shape, right? I say like an X shape. For this is pronation. But that's why fil fil fi a lot of movement in the bone itself. In most the other long bones, it just any. الجوينت اللي يحركها وخاصة انتهى الموضوع فيعني ما فيها lots of movement لا ال radius والأنا فيها complex movements where they move a lot فا any kind of fracture نعتبره intraarticular fracture ولازم يكون فيها surgical approach because أصلا if you imagine إذا سوينا a conservative approach تخيل مثلا بس نحط cast لـ patient مثلا for example with an ulnar fracture طيب ومثلا تعرف with a cast you can still move your hand شوية you can still do a bit of pronation a bit of supination فا 
this kind of movement will delay or even prevent healing or حتى حتسوي لي complications في healing for any kind of radio or ulnar fracture حنقول حيكون ايش intra-articular وزي ما قلنا أول any kind of intra-articular fracture what kind of approach do we take we take a surgical approach so open reduction internal fixation الحين let's talk about complications one of the most common complications of fractures of the radius أو الألنا شيء نسمي طبعا هو في مال يونين و نون يونين في كل شيء الثاني و compartment syndrome بس the most common complication is cross union what's cross union زي ما انتم شايفين بهذه الصورة so إذا ال fixation ما صار على طول if this patient didn't get medical attention على طول أو if the uh, physician responsible for this patient مثلا decided to take a conservative approach ما كان fixation بطريقة صح لسه حيصير في pronation, supination حيكون في مثلا crossing over بين الراديو والراديوس والألنا ف this is gonna happen اللي هو ايش؟ the bones will fuse together ف this is a very يعني صراحة hard complication و يعني عشان كده we try to prevent it by directly doing a surgical approach instead of just doing a conservative approach لأنه this is common in cases where a conservative approach is taken فخاصة نتذكر هنا من هذه السلايد انه ايش؟ radius and ulna are نعتبرهم as um, إيش اسمه as joints okay so they're intraarticular any fracture فيها حيكون open reduction internal fixation so الحين let's talk about the specific kinds of uh, fractures so بالتفاصيل عندي two kinds of fractures بشكل عام في ال forearm عندي Montague fracture وعندي Galeazzi fracture one of them في الألنا one of them في ال radius كيف أتذكرهم أنا عن نفسي يعني ممكن ما يساعدكم بس أنا عن نفسي كيف أفرق بينهم من أول كنت أتلخبط شوية المونتاجيو it has an N صح؟ so ال N كأنها عكس ال U so that's U ulnar fracture والثانية حتكون ال radial fracture so وكل واحدة فيهم uh, حتكون يعني مثلا حيكون معاها an associated injury so this is an ulnar fracture with an associated injury و this is a radial fracture with an associated injury as well Sorry, so هنا إيش؟ المونتاجيا زي ما قلنا N so حتكون عكسها U so that's an ulnar fracture إيش the associated injury حقتها؟ Radial had dislocation so إذا الفراكتر في الألنا أكيد الإنجري الثانية حتكون برا الألنا so ulnar fracture مع radial had dislocation الجاليازي fracture حيكون زي ما قلنا fracture of the radius with subluxation of the distal radio ulnar joint so let's look at this picture so this is the fracture of the radius وهذا ال radio ulnar joint this radio ulnar joint شايفين انه كيف it's not in place it's يعني it's not intact anymore so زي ما قلنا اول حيكون ال main injury اللي هو ال fracture of the radius وال associated injury حيكون مكان ثاني اللي هو ال distal radio ulnar joint و both of them ايش ال treatment option حقهم حيكون both of them will be treated by open reduction and internal fixation انه زي ما قلنا اول انه ال radius وال ulnar ال fractures فيها نعتبرها intra-articular fractures So open reduction, internal fixation. Okay, so the Montague fracture, كمان نتكلم فوق الهيل ulnar fracture, لها a classification برضو. It's called the Bado classification, and it's classified according to the direction of the radial head dislocation. طيب. هنا موضحاتها مرة. So the type one, anterior dislocation of the radial head, or anterior angulation. Type two, حتكون عكسها. نحنا قلنا according to the direction, right? So you can see type one is the radial head. Anteriorly dislocates, while angulation of the ulna, the fracture itself, will be anterior. So anterior, anterior. Type two will be the complete opposite. So posterior dislocation and posterior angulation. So if type one was anterior, or type two was posterior, what would type three be? It will be any kind of ulnar fracture. It will be a lateral radial head dislocation. So here, anterior. Regam one is anterior. Regam two is posterior. Regam three will be. أو نمبر 3 حيكون lateral آخر واحدة type 4 so type 4 يعني دي دائما كل واحدة حتكون أسوأ من الثانية صح so type 4 حتكون the worst one of all حتكون fracture of both the radius and the ulna وحيكون radial head dislocation as well إحنا دائما قلنا it's a fracture with a dislocation so type 4 is the worst حيكون fracture of the ulna fracture of the radius with radial head dislocation so الصورة توضحها شوف هنا كيف anterior dislocation anterior angulation Posterior dislocation, posterior angulation. Here you have generally an ulnar fracture, my lateral dis, uh, um, lateral uh, dislocation, and then here a fracture in both. Cause automatically that's type four. So we covered everything.
آخر شيء هم أسهل اثنين كولي فراكتشر وسميث فراكتشر to make things easy آه كيف أنا أتذكرها عن نفسي كولي فراكتشر كل شيء فيها دورسل سو so حنقول دورسل displacement دورسل angulation أوكي سميث فراكتشر كل شيء فيها بالمر أو كل شيء فولر سو so حيكون فولر displacement and فولر angulation بس دائما في عندنا شيء يكسر القاعدة مستحيل كل شيء يكون زي كذا سهل ف دائما لما تشوفوا كلمة Apex just switch the rule تونا قلنا بس احنا قاعدين الحين كوليس فراكتشر everything is dorsal right so we'll say dorsal displacement dorsal angulation with what ممكن نقول uh, volar angulation of the apex فلما نشوف كلمة Apex تعكس القاعدة نفس الشيء مع سميث قلنا everything is volar or everything is palmar right so حنقول volar displacement Volar angulation لما نتكلم عن angulation بشكل عام بس لما نقول حنقول dorsal angulation of the apex لما نشوف كلمة apex قلنا حيكون العكس so we already talked about this so it's a fracture of the distal radius right مع dorsal angulation and displacement وإيش الassociated injuries حقتها مع الكوليس fracture حيكون في عندي ulnar styloid process fracture median nerve injury extensor pulses longest rupture um, وإيش الapproach حقها يعني treatment approach I can usually uh, close reduction and cast application. You can just apply a cast. You know, it's your tibar, يعني a minor kind of fracture. It's not too severe. Or sometimes open reduction, internal fixation, it can, um, if it's needed. I'm not sure specifically why. Uh, next is Smith. We talked about it in a general way. When does it happen? When you fall on your hand, it's flexed. It's an unstable fracture. Treatment, it's the same. You can it can be closed or operative. وهنا مرة مهمة both Collie's fracture و Smith's fracture we have to distinguish them من نوع نوع fracture ثاني اسمه Barton's fracture ايش هو Barton's fracture؟ it's an intraarticular fracture طيب بس Collie و Smith they're not intraarticular fracture they're extraarticular fractures so they're they're not inside the wrist joint they're outside the wrist joint okay Collie's fracture and Smith's fracture فـ Barton's fracture هي كأنها كوليو كأنها سميث they have the same presentation بس الفرق ايش؟ انه it's intraarticular so و Barton's fracture ممكن تكون volar ممكن تكون dorsal ف dorsal can be mistaken for Collie's fracture و volar can be mistaken for Smith's fracture ف Barton has two kinds زي ما قلنا بس it's intraarticular فمتى ما تشوفوا كلمة intraarticular fracture ما يفرق volar او dorsal خلاص automatically حنقول انه ايش؟ it's a Barton's fracture وخلاص full stop that يعني it's that easy Um, I think I covered everything. Hopefully, it will be clear to you and you understand it. If you have any other question, uh, feel free to contact me at any time. Adi. And just as you have any questions, please call me.